lied, I haven't committed perjury, and I haven't stolen anything for a long time, but I help a lot of people. And the, the judge is going to say, what does that have to do with the, the crimes that you've committed already? I gotta, there's got to be justice for those things. And if he would, would he be a good judge if he just let you go just based off of you helping other people and making you know, the world a better place on your own standard? No, he wouldn't be a good judge. He would be a wicked judge. And what I want you to realize is that there's going to be a day that you're going to go from this life into eternity, but you're going to face your creator, the God that you don't know about right now, the God that you don't believe in, that you know of, of other people believing in. You know, that God, his standard is what's going to be held up against you and by yourself. Him and you, you're going to be an open book. Do you understand that? Okay. Hey, how's it going? Do you speak? You guys speak? So listen, li listen, guys. I, I, I'm going to ask you a question. You I got to answer in three seconds, okay? Okay, step up a little closer. When I ask you, are you a good person, what's the first thing that comes in your mind? Black. Right now. Black? Black. Okay, but I mean, as far as, oh, that means, that means no. That means dark. Kind of. <laughs> We're symbolizing things here. Okay, so how about you? Good person, yes or no? Okay, so the first question I need to ask you, you can read that later, Rob. First question I got to ask you is, uh, have you ever lied? And if you lied, have you lied a hundred times, a thousand times, or ten thousand times in your lifetime? I lost track. You lost track. So, a numerous amount. That's where I'm at. <laughs> How many times do you think you lie, man? About 100? You're doing good. You're a good liar. That's good. You're a good liar. Okay, so so think about this. What do we call in the Webster dictionary someone that tells lies? What do we call it? A liar, right? A liar. I mean, very lying liar, right? Okay, so have you taken anything that doesn't belong to you, whether it's small or big, insignificant, value doesn't matter, pencil pins, cars, banks? Banks? He said, yeah. When I said banks, he's like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, Bluetooth? Oh, your food. He's always taking the food when you're not looking. That's it. So what do you call someone that takes something that doesn't belong to you off the plate? Heathen. Heathen? What? Heathen. Heathen. <laughs> What's a heathen? A sinner? A <laughs> sinner? Okay, so what do they call them? Someone that takes something. A what? Yeah, but what do you call it? So you take something that doesn't belong to you. No, it starts with a, it starts with a T. So we're like a robber, but they're called a, a, a thief, right? A thief, right? So here's the last question on this subject. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Said Jesus this, or oh my, OMG, right? Plenty of times, right? How about you? Have you? No, you don't, you don't use it? Why don't you use it? Were you raised up not thinking to use that name or something? God and Jesus? Uh, okay, you, you just don't, huh? Wow, most of the world does. Third countries do it. No. <laughs> Third world countries do it. So on your texting, OMG, nothing like that? Sometimes to him? <laughs> is that because you're calling them God, or is that because you're just saying, oh my God? <laughs> okay, well, think about this. So it says that God who created you and made you, he won't hold you, he'll hold you, he won't hold you guiltless when you use his name because if we love someone or know someone or honor someone, we just wouldn't use their name that way, uh, especially if it was like our mom or someone we adored and loved, you know. We, we were would, created on the left side of the rib. Uh, yeah, on the left side of the rib? Was it the left side? I think it was the left side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to look at Genesis. Okay, so, so think about this. You're standing before the San Diego judge, Judge Judy sitting there. You got lucky. Judge Judy is in there. She's got her black robe on. She's got her hatchet, I mean, her hammer in her hand. And she's got the paperwork that I just spoke to you about. So she needs to hear it from you, right? Just like the court system. Her job is to what? Make sure justice is served, right? So she looks at you and she says, it says here you lied, stole, and blasphemy. Innocent or guilty? What do you tell her? Guilty. What do you so on the day of judgment, are you going to be innocent or guilty according to his standard, not your own? So are you going to be innocent or guilty on the day of judgment? If today was your day of judgment and you were to pass from this life to the next, because you're not guaranteed tomorrow, you look at the news every day, young and old people die, accidents happen, terrorists, it's a, it's a wicked world we live in. It's a possibility. I don't want that for you. I don't wish that on anyone. 
but it's a possibility. That's why we're here, and that's why I'm talking to you right now, talking about important things like life and death, heaven and hell. So would you be innocent or guilty? It's good that you're thinking about it because this is really important. I mean, wouldn't you say that this subject is probably the most important subject? If this is life and death kind of issues? Yeah. Remember, it's, remember, if heaven is real and God is real, which I believe he is, he's proven himself to me and to this world, but if he is real and it's his standard that is gonna be used, what do you think? Just based off of our initial courtroom analogies, earthly judge is gonna say you're guilty, you've admitted to these crimes, what is God, the judge of the universe, who knows your heart and the intents of your thoughts, what is he gonna say, innocent or guilty? Innocent? Innocent, why would he say that? Because, I mean, yeah, I've done things that I have regretted over the time, and I can say that I, I truthfully would like forgiveness for all the stuff that I may have done. Based off of what terms, though? Why would he forgive you? Because I forgive myself. I, I'm asking for forgiveness. And I You're, truly mean it, and I truly want to be forgiven. Okay. Okay, go to the earthly realm again, to the court in San Diego, and you're going to tell the judge that I want to, I want you to forgive me because I forgive myself, judge, and I'm asking you to forgive me and just let me go. Don't, I don't want to do the punishment. I don't want to do prison time or whatever. You know, is that going to work in a, a real court of law here in San Diego? Oh, well, Hillary got away with it, so. Okay, you're not Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I would never want to be. And, and plus, she was not in front of a judge yet, so far. So, I mean, what do you think? Would he, would he let you go based off of that statement? Probably not, and neither is God. God is not going to be bribed. It's like, it's like saying, I could do it on my own. I'm going to be better. Just let me in. You, under, you understand? Do you, or, or do you not agree with me? No, I agree and disagree with you. Okay, what do you disagree with, and what do you agree with? I agree with pretty much everything you said. Okay, what do you disagree with? Have you ever thought about things like this before? Okay, so what do you disagree with? I mean, devoting your entire life to God, I don't, I don't want to. You don't want to de devote your life to God? So, so basically what you're telling me is you're holding on to something so precious that according to the Bible, you're going to go to hell for. Your, your, devote, your, your devotion to God is going to be neglected because you want your life your way. Is that right? You don't want to do it his way? That's what, basically what you're telling me, right? I mean, I want to do what's best for my country, for other countries. Yeah. Okay. That's a noble thing. These are all things that you need to start questioning and, an and ha finding answers to. But here, here's the, here is the bad news, Donnie. If you were to die today in your sins, you're lying, you're thieving, blasphemy and adultery in the, of the heart, and other things that you haven't dis disclosed to us, right, to me, um, you would go to hell. The Bible says that if you die in your sins, you're going to perish in the way. You're going you're gonna to meet God's wrath, okay? Anyway, Judge Judy, okay, so you're standing before the judge. He says you're innocent and guilty. You said you're guilty, you say you're innocent. You take the fifth or what? <laughs> okay, so think about this. Now she has to give you a, a penalty for the crime. Because if she didn't, if she just said, if you said you're sorry, and she said, oh, okay, we're going to let you go. What would happen to the next case if it was worse than yours and she started just letting people go because of feelings rather than the justice system, right? Wouldn't we start going, dude, something's wrong with this justice system. I mean, look at the, the world we live in today. When we look at the judges and what they do, we're like going, dude, something's not right, right? Yeah, yeah, it's getting crazy out there, right? So think about this, man. She's going to press a sentence. If you can't pay the price for it, what happens to you? If you can't pay the price for the crime you committed and it's more than you got, she's asking you to pay for it today, what happens to you? 
jail. You go to jail. Right now, as it stands right now. But the good news is this. 2,000 years ago, God made a way for all of humanity to gain his righteousness. He became a man in the person of Jesus Christ. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He never once lied, stole anything. He never blasphemed. He never looked and lusted at, after anyone. He was perfect. He was the God man. 33 years into his life, he went to the cross. He was killed a torturous death of crucifixion. Do you know about this? His life's blood was spilled for you for the wrong things that you've done in all of humanity, of all time, okay? He didn't stay dead though. He rose, the third day he rose from the grave, just as he told everyone he was gonna do. God raised him from the grave, the Father in heaven raised him from the grave, and he defeated sin and death, okay? So what happens on the cross and the resurrection is that you could go into the courtroom now and have your fine paid. It's a legal transaction that happened on the cross. So all the wrong things that you're, you did and on the day of judgment, those that are in Christ, those that accept God's gift and do life his way, have his righteousness. But it's not just saying and, and having an intellectual belief of these things. It, there's some, you know, in an agreement, in a, a contract, there's two parties, right? There's one party giving the contract and one agreeing to it, to the terms. There's two things that people have to do. One is to turn to God, that's repentance, turn to God, and the other is to put their full trust in Him and faith. And when a, a person does that, God allows the, His Spirit to come into to their life and change them from the inside out. And then you have God's righteousness. See, that's, that's what you're lacking right now. If you don't have repentance, turning to God, the true God, the only God, and complete trust and faith in Him, you're lacking a, a close relationship, is, which is what he wants. 